AccuStats Video Production present from Louisville, Kentucky, the first annual Derby City Classic. Along with Danny DiLiberto, I'm Bill and Cardona. We're at the Executive West Hotel in Louisville, where over 160 players gathered here to play in this spectacular event. Now, the two players we have in our feature match this evening, Shannon Dalton from Somerset, Kentucky, his opponent, none other than the imminentable Efren Reyes, to hear what he said, imminentable, he's matchless. He's the only player in this tournament without a loss, Danny. Well, I guess you're not going to speak then. I, I am. I was watching the leg. The leg was so close in interest. I'm sorry. Yeah, uh, Dalton won the leg, but I was following the leg. So important. And usually you talk longer than this, Billy. You must. Uh, yeah, you're out of stroke right now. A great, a great match. I mean. Well, I guess Dalton has finally arrived as one of the premier nine ball players in the world. A little earlier, and I think it was a match yesterday, he defeated uh, Francisco Bustamante, the number one player in the world. And just recently, I think last match, he defeated Nick Varner. Handily, by the way. Played it solid as complete. He's playing very well. And notice how well he broke the balls. The one ball and the cue ball both down the other end of the table. And after pocketing a ball on the brick... He, he can come up with a shot more often because of the direction of both the one and the cue ball. But unfortunately, he don't have much of a shot. He's looking at a safe here. Cut the one all the way down behind the three and nine, right? Well, let's see what he does here. Uh-oh, don't hit the three. He won't like it if he hits the three. Yeah, that shot was a pretty risky shot because it really didn't have much margin for error right. on that particular shot. Right. Efren Reyes steps to the table, the number one player in the world today beside Francisco Bustamante. But Bustamante is officially the number one player in the world today. And a lot of people think that Efren Reyes is still the number one player. But, of course, you only can attain that status if you yeah. win enough tournaments to work. But I'll tell you right now, I think... Bustamante's playing a little bit better. A little bit. You know, I give him a little edge. But, uh, you know, everybody, you, you, all, you go to any of the pool players, who's the best player in the world? Everybody's going to say Efren. But Bustamante uh, had a good uh, camel series, and he was the number one and earned it. That's a tough thing to do, what he did. But anyway, here, Efren is in a good spot to win the all-around bonus. You know, he's leading on points, and it, once again, he's finishing very high, so I think he's a shoe-in point-wise. Now, you're speaking about this particular tournament. This particular tournament, sure. Right here. And you know, <coughs> he's the only player in the nine ball that does not have a loss. He has an option when he loses to buy back into the tournament. You mean if he loses? Yes, exactly, if he loses. And uh, I've just been informed that if uh, Dalton wins this tournament, then he can overtake Reyes. So, therefore, this is a real big match for Dalton. And Reyes also. But more so for Dalton <coughs> because Reyes does have the option left. Right. He's going to get two tries at it. I don't know if Reyes can see the outside of the three ball. I don't think that he can. He's probably going to have to go two cushions underneath the three. And uh, this shot here, if he hits too deeply behind the three, could, could carry a scratch in the little right-hand right. corner. It, it, well, every time I try to hit this two rails this close, where it goes right in the pocket. But, you know, he aims better at a, a particular part of the ball. But in this case, he didn't go in any pocket, but he did leave some sort of a shot. The seven ball blocks the pocket for uh, the five ball in the lower right-hand corner. No, I don't think it does, Billy, but it doesn't. But uh, here's the shot. That was the shot to win the, the game. No, the five goes in his pocket where the seven is. He has a full pocket? Yeah, he has a full pocket. Well, evidently he must have a full pocket because he's wasn't really hesitant at all about playing position for it no, in the lower right-hand corner. I'm closer to the side of the table, and I can see it passes. It, if you hit that seven, you would have missed the ball anyway. Dalton's playing extremely well. 
Very well. Pocketing with a lot of confidence, and we all know what a tremendous stroke he has. And he has pretty good cue ball control. That was a little touchy. He has certainly has all the tools, Danny. He's a gutsy little player. Yeah, he can really play all games, too. Game number one goes to Dalton. He takes the early lead in a short race to seven, one to nothing. Yeah, he plays all games well. He plays excellent bank pool, and he may be the best one-pocket player in the world today, even though Efren Reyes has that sort of like title. Well, he's, but, at uh, least, uh, he's at least up there in the top three or four. Well, he's the only player to have won three legends of one pocket. Yeah, that's So that, uh, that speaks for itself. Yeah, there can't be an accident. You win one, maybe you got lucky, but three of them, you, you got to be close to the best to do that. Yeah, you really have to because it's not an accident, particularly playing one pocket, you know. Takes a lot of skills to play one pocket. Notice how how Notice solidly. how it would look like a trick shot. The one, the two and three followed each other in the pocket, and the nine never moved. That's true, but the nine's just where it was. But notice the position of of the one in the cue ball once again. He's playing position on the one, breaking the balls in the fashion that he's breaking them. Both the one and the cue ball have gone down to that end of the table now twice, two consecutive times, which is to me, it tells me that he's playing the playing position for the one. Okay, and now that he played position, what's he going to do with it? Well, uh, now it's your turn. You're going to tell us that. Oh, I think <laughs> he's not even shooting it. I think he's playing safe. And I'm right. <clears throat> but I don't it might have came out. I should say he is attempting a safe. It's very close whether it's come out or not. He, he took a look at it. He doesn't seem displeased at all. But well, of maybe he don't want help, uh, to help Efren. Efren's oh. going to twirl it a little here. Yeah. Well, he don't have to get position here if he makes it. And mm. he over twirled the rock. And, and oh, boy. Body English on Shannon. He wanted uh, the cue ball to hit that five and make it easier. It goes in a few pockets. But and with ball in hand especially, you can get to those pockets. Yeah, that's the uh, that's the luxury of putting ball in hand that you can play position on the next ball yeah much easier than you could naturally if you didn't have ball in hand see that's where you'd like to be next shot right where you put the cue ball now now even though Shannon leads one nothing in this match and it looks like he may go up two to nothing there isn't a lead safe when, you, when you're talking about the upper echelon nine ball players that oh, had that no. big break. That was proven the last time he played in a match against Francisco Bustamante. He was able to amass a 5-1 to one lead against Francisco, only to see himself lose that match 7-5. to five. Oh, yeah, there's no comfort here until you make the game ball. So, therefore, he's not going to get overconfident. He's not going to get real complacent if he does have a big lead. Well, we're talking about a big league. If he gets out here, he's he's only winning two nothing. That's not a big no, lead yet. No, no, no. I understand that, but uh, as as he wins games and if he's able to to uh, accumulate, but you notice what league, he's, he's been not doing. <coughs> he gets out every time he's supposed to, and then some of the tough ones that he's not supposed to. And when you can do that. You win tournaments. Absolutely. He's, in other words, he's giving away nothing. You you can't uh, relax with him and think you're going to have an easy game here and there. You're going to have to earn beating him because he is playing very solid. Even though he's not a household name in regard to nine ball, he certainly make his presence felt in, in, in this tournament for sure because he has beaten all the Giants. Bustamante, uh, Varner, uh, and now Reyes, he's going to have the opportunity to defeat him and give him his only loss. And if he continues to play as well as he's been playing, if the first two games is any indication how he's going to be playing for the rest of the match, well, he's going to be tough to beat. Let's say this, he's not intimidated at all. Except now he didn't make a ball and uh, he snookered him. Efren Reyes has nothing. The break can really work against you. 
Where do you push now? Where do you push? <coughs> you you have to come with a trick shot with top players. He has to push somewhere where uh, he can trick Dalton. Well, he can't push down the table because uh, Dalton will, will reposition the cue ball underneath the six and the seven. He's going to push for the kick. Straight in, maybe he'll push. No, no, he's pushing for the kick. Or maybe straight in now. It went pretty, i am tell you what, it's frozen. And uh, Dalton didn't even hesitate. He just said shoot. <clears throat> and I do believe he tried to push him straight in. I think so, <clears throat> yes. But, and, and he and, did. Yeah, and the reason that he pushed him straight in is because he knew he would position the cue ball near or maybe even on that cushion with his excellent touch. Except this is the magician. You don't know if he's going to shoot or play safe off the ball. And now it looks like Dalton made a mistake. But how's that control? Well, it looks like Dalton actually tricked him. Yeah, it's a well, it's, like I say, uh, he, nobody has gained an advantage yet because the other guy is still at the table. So you don't ever know. What, you can't feel good yet if you're Dalton, just like uh, Efren couldn't feel good. Yeah, I don't think Reyes can possibly get the best of this. Well, he is the magician. That's a good shot there. Oh, that's ball in hand. <coughs> That's ball in hand. <clears throat> now he must have been trying to pinch it some way. If Shannon doesn't have a pocket, I look for Shannon to reposition the cue ball behind the six, setting the one in the area of the where the four is possibly, or uh, somewhere down there. But what reposition the cue ball solidly behind the six. And uh, he has a chance for three in a row if that happens. But evidently he has a pocket, no. Danny. So I don't but think we're going to see him do that. I was getting into something. The last time, maybe the only time Efren got, uh, lost a game on three in a row, Dalton did it to him in one of the recent tournaments. Yeah, and I have really never, <coughs> never have seen Efren lose a, lose a game yeah. by the forfeit route, three consecutive three fouls. But he did in one of the last tournaments because I did the commentary. In fact, later on in the match... Dalton had another chance to get him. I said, look at this. He, he already has the record. He's going to break it. <laughs> but here it comes again. Maybe. Well, I don't think this time because it was it was important for Dalton not to allow, allow Efren to see that side yeah. rail. He didn't position the cue ball solidly behind the six. And You're right. He yeah. allowed Efren back at the table with, with the ability to go one cushion to the one. Well, maybe with good execution here, he can freeze him on the two. Rail first, right? How about freezing him on the six? You just roll it real softly. Yeah, you got to get back to the rail then. Yeah. That's what he's trying. He got him, but he didn't freeze him on No, but he, he got hit him. It maybe a little bit too hard for what you said, but he wanted to make sure he got back to the rail. I think Efren's got a one rail kick again, this time utilizing this short cushion. This one here, I think he has to hit with some speed. I don't think there's any safe possibilities with this one. Well, he didn't. Uh, he, he, he Once again, he opted to hit it softly enough to... Uh, Come off that side, probably. Yeah, and that's, what he, that's, the way he, that's the way he played it also, because he has such an uncanny ability to kick balls with accuracy. To kick safe. I, I talk about it all the time. In the beginning, when the rules first came out, ball in hand... Uh, we just mostly kick to hit the ball and get lucky. And then another art came into the, the game. <coughs> Efren's kicking safe. The position of the, both the six and the seven are going to create problems for one of these players later on in the game. Unless Efren can do something with it right now. now he's opting not to, so evidently he didn't like yeah, I don't think he could have hit it full enough to come off the rail and hit the inside of the six. So he figures he'll do something later. He's certainly going to have chances. Look where the five is sitting. Yeah, that was a good point. That's a good observation. The five ball is positioned up near the upper left-hand corner pocket. And with the correct angle on the five, you can go into the six and free up the six from the seven. Yeah, it'll be tough to miss that. And with, uh, with Ray's excellent cue ball control, I don't think there's much of a problem. No, I, I'm sure I'm sure he will do something to open those two balls off of the five. 
Or maybe he'll do it off the four. That that could be what he's looking at. While the five is near a pocket, it's a good time to go at balls that are tied up. Let's see. Maybe that's what he's thinking of right now. If he can possibly, I don't know the angle he has, if he can get a little bit of an angle for the side pocket and just go softly into those. No, he didn't. But that's another excellent assessment yeah. by you, Danny. It was a really uh, an intelligent thing to uh, <coughs> to he look for. Do it. Is he going to try it here? Nope. He decided to just go two rails on the inside, and uh, only a bad roll would stop him here. Yeah, this is a big target. If you go two rails, you're more apt to come out come out of it with a shot, right? Opposed to going one cushion, two cushions there it like is. he's Perfect. done. One, Perfect. two. Now, regardless of which ball he hits, he's, he's going to come out of it with a shot. And if he happened to go on there without hitting it, then he had a pretty good save. So, therefore, Reyes once again plays the percentages as he normally does. And for you uh, aspiring players out there, trying to play the percentages is what we really want to do. But knowing where they lie is a different thing. At that time, it, the percentages were to go with two cushions into the uh, six and the seven. Yeah, there are better ways to go on certain layouts where if you shoot them 100 times, you'll get out more times. In, in fact, one of the tapes, guy went the dead wrong way, and I said he shot, he hit the wrong shot perfectly. And, and that's that doesn't mean, you, in other words, <coughs> going the wrong way, you can't get out. We're just talking about the percentage way to go. Anyway, Efren wins that one. And it's now two to one in favor of uh, two to one in favor of Dalton. Okay, now Reyes. Even though a lot of people don't believe that Reyes is break, breaks the balls well, he does break the balls well. Matter of fact, they put a they put a speed gun on Reyes when he broke the balls, and he actually broke the balls as hard as players like uh, Archer. Is that right? Yeah, and uh, you would never believe it, but uh, but th that's what the. The, uh, the results came back with the speed gun that he broke the balls with the same velocity as a player like Johnny Archer. And like like me, too, then. then you know, yeah, yeah, like Danny, the breaker, the big breaker. Yeah. Matter of fact, they named you a big breaking Dan. Uh, he's, he went in the side. Notice how much action. No, no. Notice all the balls down at the other end of the table, yeah. how much action he got off the break. It's certainly a strong indication that he's hitting them, that he hit the break hard. He has ball in hand, but it's not uh, nothing real easy. Well, this is definitely a potential three foul uh, yeah. game if here. It, but you got to do some freezing. Well, he's going to reposition the one ball. You, you got to do some freezing, yeah. In a position where it's going to be really difficult to hit. Now, Reyes will go one cushion. Mm -hmm. See, he he hit the one ball too hard. He allowed Reyes right. at the table to go one cushion to hit it, and he's very accurate with his kicking, yeah. Danny. You know that. He's is, so accurate. Is he going to hit this pretty hard? Well, he probably he should. Because if he hits it hard, he's got a chance for a billiard on the nine. Let's just see. No, it's soft. He just wants to make sure he hits it, which he did. And he wants to do anything but ball in hand. Even this. I think he sold out, but anything is better than ball in hand. Well, if if the two six combination is available, Shannon will pocket the one. He should draw the cue ball into the nine to stop the progress of it. He played the one off the six there, yeah. but he didn't control the cue ball. Well, he I mean, has no shot. The offensive shot was well thought out, but the cue ball a little suspect. I think that he should have been a little more careful with the cue ball because that was an opportunity for Shannon, and uh, he didn't really. Do well play it safe it. now. I guess try to get behind the eight and bank two back to the middle of the table. That's what he's trying to do. He That's might exactly have done it. That's what he's tried to do, and he definitely has has done it. Yeah. Now, had he froze him on the eight, it would have been history to hit. You know, Efren's going to hit this one. He'll probably kick. Well, he's going to kick two cushions at it. He made it, almost. Made it easy is what he did. <laughs> and he scratched, too. Oh, yeah. Well, he Dalton wants to see him scratch because from that position, there's no guarantee he would have played good shape for the three. But with ball in hand, once again, Automatically. <laughs> that's great luxury to have. Yeah.
The seven ball was in a tough spot, but considering the position of the six, certainly makes it obtaining a shot on the seven a much easier task. He hit the two a tad too hard. You know, you'd like to have a little easier shot. I mean, it's not a tough shot, but you'd like to have an easier shot than that. <coughs> he jumped up on that ball a little Terrible bit. Terrible stroke. He yeah. didn't like where he got, and uh, it, it's going to be... Uh, might turn everything around. You know, how many times have you been playing nine ball with somebody, gambling, and you're killing, and suddenly you give away a game and it all switches, right? Yeah. Very and, fickle. And, and, uh, and uh, Chandler looked so comfortable the first two games of the match. You know, whatever he tried to do, he did well. And two uh, shots in a row there, very simple shots. He allowed uh, yeah. his concentration somewhat to, uh, to escape him, it looked like. He definitely uh, did not look comfortable. And that's all a matter of concentrating. That's all that is. I mean, he was supposed to have gotten better position on the three. And then when he played himself out of line, Danny, this is something that you uh, alluded to a little earlier in, in one of the other telecasts, is that when you play yourself out of line, sometimes it's more difficult to come with that shot oh, had no you been left it. that shot by your opponent. That's worth mentioning because I think that that, uh, that has a lot of knowledge to it. Uh, what I said was... When you play position for a ball and you get out of line and leave yourself a tough shot, it's a much tougher shot to pocket than if your opponent missed and left you that same shot. You know, there's a psychological thing that that uh, can beat you there. Yeah, you're probably pr too preoccupied with losing a little dignity, and you allow that to break your concentration right. when you do it to yourself. Right. Well, I always said one thing about this game. Uh, anyway, it's going to be tied up here 2-2. Two -two. But I always said it that uh, when a good player is running out and looks like he's out and he misses the ball and saves you, you still have to feel happy, even if it stops on top of the lights because you have life where you didn't have any, you know. And, uh, and this psychological stuff tends to not wear out your nerves if you, if you know what to think of when that happens. And I always think of, well, Efren's got the six, seven, eight, nine, all hangers, and he misses the six and saves me. I don't mind one bit, because one way I was dead, one way I wasn't. So I try to tell the younger players, don't agonize because you're only going to blow energy. He's not hitting them hard at all. He certainly seems like he's getting a lot of action. He did, but you know, he nothing ever came close to going in a pocket. Do you play safe here, Billy, or do you? Well, I play safe because of the position of the two ball, in a really difficult position on the table to play uh, to play position for. You're right. I follow through the one ball, applying a little right hand English and trying to reposition the cue ball somewhere behind the four here. Four or eight or something. You're right, but he, he looks like he wants to shoot now. He don't like what happened in the last rack. He's thinking about cutting the one. And the thing about it is, like you say, it's not automatic position, so you're better off playing safe. I, I have a little bit of a rule that when position and the shot are difficult, look to play safe. Well, frankly, I really didn't see any accessible route to the two from the angle that was offered to him on the one. So he intelligently opted to play safe. Now the magician's at the table. He's going to twirl it around the four. And but leave an easy shot. <laughs> and leave an easy shot. Okay, now let's take a look at the balls that weigh their position on the table, Denny. Obviously the one ball, two ball, and the three ball are out in the open. Now the four ball, I don't know if it'll pass the eight in the upper right-hand corner. But where the three is sitting, it doesn't matter because you can play position uh, for the other pocket, you know, the other corner, because the three automatically gets you there. If he gets straight in on the three, he don't have to think about does the four pass. Well, now Evid he has to think about yeah, it. Yeah, evidently the way he played the shot uh, on the two to the three, the four must have a pocket past the eight. It must be somewhat of a pocket or else I think he so. would have put more effort into that particular shot. You're right. No, it didn't it because didn't he have a played pocket. a billiard. What a great shot. He played bad position uh, to the three, but he overcame it with a perfect finesse shot. This is a this is a tough little shot here. Let's take a look at it. Okay, two cushions around the eight. Still got tricky. Yeah, 
leaving himself distance. Now, had the pocket upper right-hand corner been available, position on the five ball would have been a much easier task, and probably he would have ended up with a much nicer shot. Is he straight in here? Because he's drawing the ball into traffic with the seven and eight, if it's straight in. That's just what it is. But look at this stroke. He did it effortlessly. And once again, uh, Shannon Dalton showing us. That's a us, great shot. Showing us what a tremendous stroke he has. With the exception of that uh, position on the three, he certainly has played nicely in this rack, hasn't he? He's been playing solid this whole tournament. You know, this was a good time to stick it to him and get out. You have to get out there. Two, two. Efren made a little comeback here. You must win the game when you get a chance. So that momentary concentration lapse that he had in the preceding game. He didn't allow, the, the, allow that to bother him. The next rack, given the opportunity, he did well with it. And that's a sign of a champion. Solid run out, and he came with some strokes. But anyway, the other day you were mentioning all the people that came here. There's one in particular you didn't mention, and I was very happy to see him, and that was Cornbread Red, because there was talk about he's very ill, he's very dead. Uh, you know, he looked pretty good and in good spirits, and he even competed and did a little gambling. One of the true characters of our game. We're very happy to see him. Yeah, Cornbread is uh, a real character, and a character that uh, we all have grown to love. No, no doubt about it. He used to be a fixture in the Johnson City tournaments. Well, uh, Shannon made a ball. Oh boy, we have an upset making uh, on that other table. Uh, Rempe is beating Bustamante six to two, and that will eliminate him, won't it? Yeah, that's uh, that's an elimination match right there. Either player will be eliminated. The only player left in the tournament that has the option to buy back is Reyes. And the way Shannon is feeling and hitting the balls, he's going to put him in that position. Looks like Shannon's going to take the two-cushion route to the three. Perfect speed. Big target. And he, and he got on the right side of the three, by the way, because right. there's no traffic right. you cutting don't, the three. You in don't want to run into the eight because you can't control the cue ball. This way he just makes it and goes forward. Lucky to make it. He hit that... Uh, like I've been saying, on one of the other tables, it might not have gone, but these these uh, brighter lights <coughs> keep the table warmer and drier, and that'll accept a bad hit there. Now, this particular angle is a tough shot. He has to be careful here, because the pocket will not accept that type of a shot on that angle if it's hit uh, inaccurate. He didn't know that. I'm sure that he did. Sometimes that's bad, though. Didn't get him. <laughs> didn't get him. Yeah, get up and freewheel. That's the whole story of the game. It's not easy to do. But he sure letting the stroke go. And you could tell by his rhythm he's playing faster now. And that's Bell's little danger for uh, your hero, Effman. Sometimes a player will play flawlessly on a difficult table until he realizes that the table is difficult. <laughs> yeah, you're right about that. Game number six goes to Shannon Dalton, and now he leads by two games in this short race to seven, four games to two. You know, like when you're younger, you, know, you think shots are easy, and they tell you, boy, oh boy, those are tough shots, they're tough. Then as time goes by and you miss enough of them, you know they're tough shots. Right. And in mine, it's a funny thing. In fact, when I was boxing, before a fight once, you you got to get examined by the doctor, see. So he got my blood pressure, and all. he says, boy, you got low blood pressure. He said... Don't you get dizzy and get tired easy? And I never did. But from then on, I did. <coughs> True story. From then on, I got tired easy and dizzy. Once again, Shannon breaking the balls uh -oh. in the fashion that uh, indicates that he's playing position for the one, both yeah. the one and the cue well, ball. Well, that's a good pocket story. You know, Puckett told me a story about one time he was in this joint and they were all betting on the local guy. And one guy in particular was staking him high. 
And uh, finally, the, the backer went to the kid and says, listen, you better quit. This guy is playing position on the one. And now here it is, reality, not a funny story. It, I believe you. He's bringing, he's drawing that one back there with the cue ball. In fact, uh, if he happens to win the match, uh, you're going to certainly interview him, and you can ask him about that, if he were, if he were indeed playing position on the one. Well, he's, he's following the right side of the five. <coughs> this carries natural position for the six in the side. Had he fallen straight in or on the other side of the five, he would have created more of a problem for himself. Yeah. There's Rimpy Jimmy Rippey on the adjacent the table. It looks like this is game uh, match ball. Yeah. And that's it. Rempe won a big match there. And uh, Bustamante has to go back to Germany with very little of the prize money. Well, I'll tell you what, it's, it's difficult to win from the chair. And Jim Rumpy is the type of a player that can keep you in the chair, and it, which was evidenced in his match yeah. against Bustamante. Well, he's in the final three now. And he can get a bye. I don't think he'll get the bye. Troy Frank is still in the tournament. And, uh, <laughs> he got <coughs> two in a row. Yeah. He's got two buys in a row, so he's definitely a favorite to get the buy in a three-man field. Well, we should talk about that because I don't think you're supposed to get two buys in a row. That was a flaw in the tournament. You, you're not supposed to get two buys. He can get a third one now. Well, I mean, you know, He can actually buy himself into the finals, right? which is certainly an injustice. Anyway, uh, Shannon uh, is now on five. Five to two, his break. Efren has to be a little worried, but like you say, he, he uh, has the uh, buy-in. Yes, he does have the buy-in option. It's a it's a viable option. It's In which case, there will be no uh, buy. If he buys in, there'll be four. If Efren loses, there'll be four players still in it. If he wins, there's three and another buy. No, that's a great observation there, Danny. Yeah. So, uh, so, so, uh, Efren, so Efren. Frank won't get a buy if Shannon wins this uh, match. Wow. Once break. again, Plain once again, one, one ball and he is might down have the pretty center good of the table. Position too. Yeah, he just has to make it in the side and billiard the three over to that end rail and uh, position from the two to the three will be pretty uh, good. I mean, the side rail, right? I mean, yeah. It looks like perfect. He make might be playing one. safer, Danny. Oh, I don't think so. Oh, yes, he is. Well, see, I saw that differently. But <coughs> Maybe uh, the angle that he had on the yeah, one. Yeah, a little funny. Maybe yeah, he was, was going to glance the three and go further to the end rail. Then it's no good. Yeah. That would have been only good if you hit the three full, knock it to the side rail. Yeah, particularly where the two balls position on the cushion. And actually, that type of an angle makes this corner pocket play a lot smaller than it actually does play. That angle's a tough angle. Yeah. Efren is up against it. He needs all his kicking skills right now and a little luck. To go with it. Well, he uh, hit it, and there's no ball in hand, and he didn't leave a shot. <coughs> now what? What do you do here? And he uh, didn't leave really a, a good shot for uh, for uh, Shannon either offensively or defensively. Especially he left him on the cushion, which means you can't draw the ball. If you could draw the ball a little bit here, you can cut the one, bank it to the middle of the table, and go to the end rail. Here, if he tries that, he could scratch. He may try to elevate hitting behind the one, setting it up table, possibly. Yeah, he's kicking. That first aim looked like he was kicking. I think Not he a should, bad shot. I think he should try to elevate and send the one up table. There's a lot of balls on this side of the table right. that he might be able to reposition the cue ball. Behind. Under. Yeah. So uh, I think he's got some potential there. Just for, and he elevates so well. Even though the cue ball is pretty snug against that cushion, I do believe he can still do this. Let's take a look. He's going to try it. He may be hitting ball first here. Yeah, if he cuts it off the two and goes back, he might go behind the six. No, he never cut it, so he really was surviving there. Had to cut it a little more, and that one would have glanced off the two and <coughs> gone upstream a little bit, and then the cue ball would have traveled further. Well, there's nothing natural here. It is attainable to, to put him behind a 6-9, but it's certainly not natural. Let's take a look and see how well he does with this shot. You don't think there's any chance he's shooting it? 
Nope. Not Efren. He's not going to bet the match on that shot. And I think he left the window. Maybe he did. Mu not much of it, but no, enough possibly for him to be able to see the outside of that one. And if he can't, it'd be pretty easy to hop. And then the two-railer isn't a bad shot either. He's hopping. Well, he excels in this shot. Yeah. Well, he's not going to... Uh, you know, he's not going to make it. He's not playing. He's trying to hit it. Uh, that's going to be disaster. Not disaster because he's winning 5-2, uh, to two, but you give Efren a fairly easy out here. Efren should play position for the 2 on the side. That carries a natural angle off the 1 for position for the 2 on the side, which, which then carries a natural angle for the 3 at the other end of the oh table. Yeah. This is the game ball. This is the ball you zero in on, and if you make it, you're out. He would like to end up with a little bit of an angle. Perfect. Okay, he's perfect, as he normally is. <coughs> he'll, he'll play this two cushions. No, one cushion. He was straighter than I thought. The four ball in the side, repositioning the cue ball near the right-hand side pocket, the pocket he's shooting over now, will allow him to play the natural position for the five in the lower right-hand corner. He's fallen short of the mark, Danny, and he's created a little bit of a yeah, problem for himself A little here. thinner. If he were a hair fuller, he could just roll and shoot the five in this left-hand corner pocket to him. Uh, now he has to do something a little bit more. What? What will he do? Oh, he tried to kill it and do that, and, and it goes in the side, apparently. Yeah. Now, that's the skill that he yeah. developed playing bulk line, hitting it very softly with yeah. control, and that's very difficult to he do. He can kill that cue ball hitting a thin object ball better than anyone I ever saw. Well, without a doubt. Efren Reyes is actually the, one of the best, if not the best, bulk line player in the world today. And bulk line is a game where there's three balls, and you have to make a billiard. You don't need to hit any rails at all, as long as you just keep hitting hit each ball. Your opponent's ball and the neutral ball. You and keep doing that, and you get a point. And you develop the skill to hit both balls by not hardly moving them at all, just a minute well, distance. And that's why he can hit balls softly with great accuracy, accuracy and touch. He hangs in there. It's 5-3 now in favor of Shannon Dalton. I was just thinking of something. You know, the hatches, you have like a bunch of them. You have the brother, the father, the son, and all that, the hatches. What about when... Dalton gets older and has children and, and they come to the tournament and call it the Dalton Gang. Right? <laughs> That's true. Yeah. Don't mean anything, but I thought while we were just sitting here doing him nothing. Say something. Yeah. In fact, the next time we have a little time with a uh, pause, uh, I'm going to tell you what Cornbread Red said. Five to three, Dalton. Game number nine. Now he hit him. He hit him hard that time. Oh, he stopped Pot. the cue ball. <clears throat> yeah, stopping, stopping the cue ball. Okay. Near the center of the table. This is not, you know, uh, an easy layout because of the three. He can go two rails from the one to the two, but he has to get a perfect angle on the two to get to the three. The three is sitting a little funny, and that six is in a little bit of a bad spot to go from the two to three. Let's see what if he can do it. He's a magician if he can handle this. Now, the angle that he needs to get is the angle that he's ended up with. Perfectly. Now, you okay. just want to go at the four. And I think this is what separates Efren from most other players is that he gets this angle more often because of his ability to control the speed of the cue ball. Yes, folks, and it's not an accident. And the pool terminology for it is called falling on the right side of the ball. That's what he did. He fell on the right side of the ball. Not left to right, just the more correct angle you want so that when you make the two, you're automatically going to the next ball. That's called falling on the right side of the ball, like that. And he fell on the right side again because now he can come one rail to the uh, four perfectly. 
just make the three, and you're going one rail to the to the four ball automatically. Efren Reyes understands patterns extremely well playing nine ball, and he has the ability to execute. That's what makes him so dangerous. And when he's playing right, it looks easy. That's the whole story about great pool players. When they're playing right, it looks like it's easy and they're never going to miss. Right? To, a, to, to a novice player, Efren looks like just a mediocre player. But to, a, to a, an intelligent player, Efren looks like the best player in the world. Yeah. And when the fans get to the point where they can recognize that, we will have a major sport. This is game number nine. After pocketing the nine, he will then come to within one game of the lead, trailing five games to four. Right. Okay, while they're racking him, let me tell you what Cornbread Red said. This is, he's a character, you know that. He said that when he got here, he saw an old friend that looked really sickly. And he went up to the guy and he said, buddy, what's, what's the matter, Slick? He says, oh, I, I, I got Alzheimer's disease, he said. I, my memory's going. And Red slapped his hands and said, hey, you didn't forget that thousand I loaned you. <laughs> <laughs> and the guy reached in his pocket and paid him. <laughs> no, I didn't, he said. No, I didn't. Uh, cornbread. What cornbread a story. Cornbread, Red. Well, it, it sounds like uh, it could have possibly happened. Yeah. Cornbread, uh, one, uh, one guy that never lets anything get by him. No. Trust me, uh, he's pretty shrewd. Something flew in, and uh, it's a toss-up. He's got a shot on the one. He's got a shot. One, and the two didn't come out enough. Two didn't come out enough is right. Now we're going to see Reyes shoot into a very small pocket. Now, keep in mind, this is the angle that this table will not accept unless it's hit cleanly. And he's going to have to do something with the cue ball, which is going to make this particular shot play even more difficult. Yeah, I, I don't see him falling on the two here. The angle that he has to go looks like the six is blocking it. Well, let's see. Let's see if he can lay it. He uh, does something good here. Well, he decided not to play position for the uh, ball. I think he's going to play this combination. Yeah, well, that's what he played. He played position to play right. the combination. So he computed. <coughs> What's easier, to make this one and fall on the two good or take this shot? And this is the results. When you are positive you're shooting the right shot, you will hit the ball much better. It's another one of those psychological things. When you're absolutely sure you're, you're playing the right shot, you will hit it. It's only when you have doubt in it that you might dog it and jump up and all that. And what a layout now. I mean, now it looks easy again, and this certainly wasn't. He was trailing 5-2. Now he's come with some picture-perfect runouts. He certainly has. And what you just said, what you just alluded to about when you're, when you're positive you're playing the shot the way you want to play, you're going to get better results. That goes back to what you said earlier, that he p chose the wrong shot and hit it perfect. Right. <laughs> you know, you can choose the wrong shot, but as long as you think it's the right shot, you'll get better results. Right. No doubt about it. And he just got perfect. He couldn't put the ball with your uh, hand any better than this. Angle to angle to angle. And it looks like, like right now, Shannon is, he just waved his hands at us. Like, what is he going to do with uh, nothing? I mean, he well, may not shoot again. Right now, he's worried about not shooting again. Well, what can you do? I mean, you can't really beat what you just saw Efren do. I mean, what he did was not easy. Trust me. And I know you know that, Danny. Right. What he just did was not easy. And I'm talking about going from the one to the two, pocketing a very difficult shot on the one because that particular angle, once again, I don't want to seem redundant, but that particular angle on this table plays very extremely tough. difficult. Very tough. And he made it all look easy again, and now we have a tie ball game. Five games five, apiece. Five. Sort of like frustrating when you're the guy that he's playing. You know, right. you're in the chair. I mean, and when you're in the chair, you're, I know that you have to be thinking about, you know, how can he screw this up? I mean, am I going to get a shot? Oh, yeah. Those things run through your mind. And when you see him confronted with a difficult uh, a situation, you probably say to yourself, well, maybe I'll finally get a shot, only to see him do something right. miraculously. And you catch yourself body Englishing to put the cue ball in a bad spot for him. Yeah, you know? you're trying to play him out of shape. You're playing out of shape. 
Uh, now you got to worry about if he makes a ball, you just are you sure he's There's getting the three. out? There's, There's got the three. He's got the spin. The two. Well, he don't have a good shot on the one. He may forget running out right now and just go to play safe. And you know what he does real well? This particular shot where he can hit the right side of the one and get the cue ball to fall right behind the eight. And then once again, that's... Uh, He's very good at this shot. That's attributable to his, that, that his yeah. fine touch, with, the, with the, which he developed with his bulk line there. Well, playing you know, if he doesn't want to gamble with that, he can cross the one and use the seven and the nine to possibly snooker him. But I like the way he hits this slow, slow roller, <coughs> cut the one and fall on the rail behind the eight. I like that. And uh, I, I'm sure he's thinking of that as one of the possibilities. Now, that is a possibility, and but it's sort of like marginal whether or not it's even available. But if it's available, I wouldn't have any other player shoot it than Efren Reyes right. for my money. Well, I personally think he could uh, handle this, but now he's looking to bank the one upstream, maybe between the four and nine, and go behind the seven. Let's see. Those are the two options anyway. Well, he has to make sure that he doesn't contact the eight with the one ball. Right. Because he may have uh, it's close. to hit the one a little close. thinner yeah. it's close. than what he wants to. Yeah. He and may be playing the one off the eight here, Danny. Yeah, he could be. No. He played the one off the eight. And a little safety, too. <laughs> but it didn't work. Well, that was extra creative. I don't know if the cue ball took that uh, extra half-inch revolution to yeah. uh, hook them behind the nine or not. But uh, I think he can twirl it if it has, if it has yeah. hooked them. I don't like an object ball off an object ball when the, the, you're that far from the pocket. You know, the kiss is too far from the pocket. Uh Meanwhile, if Shannon makes this, he has a chance to go out. And he's, he's hopping it. He's hopping it, like you say. Uh, he's real good at that. Well, he didn't do too well with it, but he might get away with a, a little bit of a safe with the eight. Look at this. He got lucky. He flew all around. I believe he's got <coughs> Efren. Efren might have to hop. Has the eight blocked the path. The cue ball has to take the pocket to one. Let's take a look. It he's doesn't seem like it, it has. Right now. He could twirl this or hop this. Oh, he's, he's got regular room. Don't have to do anything. He's just aiming at the ball like it goes, and obviously it does. Ooh, he almost kicked the, the nine in, and it would have been nice to do. Uh, you know what? See, this is the one time he can't cut this four in the side and kill the cue ball because <laughs> he, he, cause he's over the top of the six. If he weren't, he could kill this so easily. He's trying anyway, I believe. I think he's going to try to find, or even draw to this end rail first, which he did. How yeah, do you like that, that little that, number? That's, that's beautiful, pool. It, it looks easy, but it isn't. It really isn't. Trust nice. us. It really isn't. It's a pressure point of the match, too. So, you know, it, there's nothing easy about that shot. And he did it uh, like it was a hanger. Now, uh. You know, Shannon is really in trouble after taking the lead. He has to get down on the other side of the seven. Yeah, he can't just go ahead and make that and stay near that rail. He needs this angle, and, and this, again, is falling on the right <coughs> side of the ball. Yes, if there was a right side to fall on, he certainly has fallen on the right side of that shot. Okay, either side of the eight here, I think, would be well, satisfactory. He would have liked a little easier shot than this, but this is what he's got, and it carries automatic position, so just make the ball. Touch of inside English. Yeah. <coughs> well, all of a sudden, we have a new leader here, Danny. Six games to five and a race to seven in favor of uh, Reyes and after falling behind five to two. I think that uh, he's shown us a lot of fortitude and a lot of skills. And, like I said, if he wins, then uh, there's a, a bye again. Three players left. One of them will draw a bye. Well, in that case, then <coughs> Troy Frank will probably be in about a two to three to one favorite to draw yeah, it. Billy's saying that because in the last two rounds, Troy Frank got a bye. And the reason for the bye is there's an odd number of players each time. And somebody has to get a buy, and they decided to just draw that way. And, and Troy Frank has hit the numbers and, and got a buy twice. And now we're going to have three players. 
if Efren wins this match. When you refer to that as hit the numbers, I think modern day people feel that they can understand that a little better if you say hit the lottery. Yeah. The numbers are from our days. Yeah. <laughs> All right. <laughs> hit the numbers. You know, that's a, that's a, You're right. a it's gamble. That, that, yeah. As, and nowadays it's, it's the lotteries. It's the lottery. Yeah. And the lottery pays much better than the numbers. <laughs> a little more difficult to hit. I have never played one lottery with all these zillions that come up, and and you might not care why, but I just feel like I've been such a lucky person in life that I'd be asking too much to try to win millions in a lottery. So I don't play it. Well, you don't need the money anyway, so no, it doesn't matter. No, it's money's just chips. Ask Grady. <laughs> anyway, here we go. He's got a kick at this. He's gonna. Was he gonna try to position the cue ball behind the two here? I don't think the angle sits. Nope. No, he's lo he's left Shannon yeah. the shot. One of his and, rare uh, bad kicks. Look, he's so disappointed. Uh, in in his effort there, Ray, is he? Well, I don't blame him because uh, he just gave him, you know, you know, like right at this moment of life, uh, uh, Shannon's been sitting a while without shooting. He needs an easy shot to start with, and he gave it to him. You know the feeling. You know, you're playing and you got against Efren. You haven't had any chance to win the last four games. <coughs> and now you don't want to come from the end rail. You would like that little nip shot there. And notice, uh, notice Shannon's walking around the table, making sure that the angle that he gets on the four is the right one. The five will not pass the six in the right. lower left-hand corner, so yeah. he has to attain that angle that will allow him to play position for the five in a very small side pocket. Yeah, well, it's close enough to it, and if he gets close enough, uh, I don't think he'll have a problem. That's going to be perfect. That's going to be perfect. The urgency to respond to the challenge certainly was there. Well, he's going to have to come back a little because you don't want to be straight in on the six right now. That's the only way you could be in a little trouble. He yeah. has to leave a little bit of an angle. Okay, now if you go forward, naturally the pocket will accept the shot much better. If you go back, that means that you're going to have to hit it harder and you're going to reduce the size of the pocket. So is it a fair trade-off? It looks like he's gotten almost straight in, Danny. Yeah, but he may have created a problem for himself here. Well, being left-handed, he could stroke this. You see, if he were right-handed now, he'd be really reaching. But left-handed, he can draw the ball and get fairly close to the seven. You know, this is sufficient. You know, and there's really nowhere to get on the eight that's wrong. You know, this is one of those shots when a ball's not close to the rail. don't matter if you get straight in. You know, he can draw and have an angle to get to the ninth. Now he might have to play it in the far corner tonight. Yeah, well, right? I think that if I was if I were Shannon, I would definitely play it in the far corner. But he's opting to play the nine in the lower left-hand corner. He's going to have to make sure he puts a good stroke on the shot because he, he might did. not get there. He did. Look at okay, he hit stroke. it perfectly. This is game number 10, excuse me, this is game number 12. And with the pocketing of the nine, we're going to find a Hill Hill match, six games apiece. Race to one. Race to one. And actually, this is what all these people came for. They came to see a Hill Hill match. and Only with good play. Yeah, yeah. You so, so you couldn't have asked for anything you know, better, more entertaining than a Hill Hill match with Efren Reyes and, and Young Shannon. Yeah, Dalton. and you, you saw it with perfection. It isn't like someone lucked out or they stumbled. Great. They both played solid and uh, here is the results. Uh, hill, hill. And now it was very important to win that leg to start. So whichever player goes on to win this match, it'll be deserving. Each of these two players have played brilliantly in this match. It was a very well played match and something that Pat should really promote through Akustats. Well, I think AccuStats uh, has added something to the game. I mean, it's made everybody more intelligent. And if this game has any shot at all to become a major sport, it, uh, people like Pat Fleming with AccuStats are going to be a major factor. That's a, that's uh, that's totally right. Now, let's not let the moment escape us here, Danny. Yeah, no. uh, Shannon broke the balls. He didn't pocket a ball in the break. But he didn't allow Efren at the table with a shot. So Efren is definitely an underdog in this particular game. And this is the match game. 
Whoever wins this game wins the match. He probably can see just the outside of the one. But sometimes, even though you can see a part of the ball, you may be better off kicking at it. Well, if he has no place to push without getting the worst of it, which it looks like he, he doesn't have any place to push, uh, he has to come with one of his magic tricks and either bluff Shannon or come with something super because he's just not uh, in a spot to have a good save. But it's, it's tough to, blu to bluff Shannon Dalton with the experience that he has. Well, so he's comes. trying to bluff him. Here, here it comes. is. There's the bluff here. Right. Now okay, uh, Which was intelligent. You know that's intelligent because you do not know what your opponent is going to do, particularly in a pressure situation. And he's playing the bluff further by standing there ready to shoot. <laughs> That's great, David. Right. It is. Look, he's grinning, too. He's, he says, oh, he sees it. He sees what? <laughs> no, he said, oh. shoot. The and bluff didn't work, if indeed it were a bluff. Did you notice what Efren did when Shannon gave him the shot? He shook his head like, oh, I didn't want him to do that. Yeah, but you know what he might do now? He might go two rails off the inside of the one and come way down here behind the three. He might do that. That's right. He might do that. And so he did have a trick, and it wasn't a bluff. Well, he's mad now because the door is open to make the one, but what about the two? I mean, should Shannon pop the one in and then take the bank on the two? Or should he just come off? Is he still playing the bluff? He I'm might be quite, playing poker. I'm not quite sure if I, w I would rather be the man in the chair or the shooter. Yeah, well, he has a position. pretty good safe if he, you know, if he cuts the ball, but he is... Look at that stroke. <laughs> he didn't well, roll it off. Uh, well, that, that, you know, that to me <laughs> I can't, is this. There's your tight pocket. I mean, I can't explain. I can't explain how difficult that was for him to do that. Yes, but with I no just, reward. But I can't explain how difficult that was. I mean, that well, was. You've that. been explaining it. Tight pocket oh tables. My. He fired it in oh on the my. rail 100 miles an hour. It did not roll off, that's for sure. But the thing about it is he didn't get a big reward for that spectacular shot. He has one more tough shot. But he did get some relief from that rail with the cue ball yeah. for with for about an inch, inch and a half off that yeah, rail. Well, that's amazing. Uh, he has a pretty good safe here, but, you know, uh, Hill Hill, you worry about anything going wrong and Efren kicking it in. I mean, you know, what do you do here? Uh, he doesn't have a guaranteed position if he makes the ball. You know, if he decides to cut it in the corner and go back and forth, he could run into the nine, scratching the side. He don't have to get position. He's definitely at a disadvantage. If I had to be either player, I would certainly rather be Reyes in this situation. Well, how about how about coming off the right side of the two and just like sort of two rail the two and try to go behind the eight ball? But the the two will probably go into the four. That's not a bad shot because you have some uh, some chance of of leaving the table in decent shape. Well, he's not doing that. He's one. floating behind the four and hopes to control both the cue ball and the two ball. No, he's oh, cutting he it shot in. It. Watch the side pocket. Oh, oh what, a, what, what a, a shot. What a shot I called. Great what a shot. shot. Great. It's greater Hill Hill with Efren. But he's not out of the woods yet because this one shot right here should tell the story. Yeah. And who's going this, to win this match? If he makes this, he wins. Unless and something freaky happens and he hits the four. He hits the, the four, four and scratches or something like that. Or he don't have a shot. But if he can twirl this behind the four two rails. Which I don't I think, think he, he can do that. I think he can. I think he can. Softly it will do that. And he'll go two rails underneath the four. See, but here's the bad thing that could have happened, which it didn't. Hitting the four and putting it on the rail where you got to do some more safety stuff. He hit it. He made the three. For that shot on the one and the two, he deserves to win this match. Well, he deserves to win this match regardless of, of, of how well he played in this particular game because of how he played throughout the match. Yeah. It's, just a, it's just a shame that Efren Reyes couldn't win the match also because he's played superbly. Oh, yeah, he came with some good stuff. Oh, he hit it too easy. No, he wanted to play for the side. So. Well, he hit it too easy or whatever he did, but I think you would rather be shooting here. Oh, no question I about mean, it. There's but, uh, nothing wrong here. Just roll forward and shoot the six in the corner. He overcut it.
he overcut it. That's why he hit it too easy. He's getting a little doggish. Oh, and, yeah. and once again, I didn't particularly care for the way he hit that shot. He overcut it, he and he allowed the cue it. ball to get away from him. Yeah. There's still a lot of suspense left in this last game here. Efren's and, eyes opened up a little, and he's and he's moaning something. I don't know what he's saying. But he's going to try to position the cue ball behind the seven here, two cushions behind the seven. Looks like he does have that angle available. Uh, I don't know about that. I would rather, being that the speed on the six is going to be end rail speed, you know, there's no problem with hitting the six at the end. I think I'd go behind the nine. Try to just finesse it and put him behind that nine. Well, he went two rails behind the seven, which was a good shot. And he's gotten there. Yeah. Yeah, he had a lot more margin for error. Yeah, and right. he also is going to create more distance between the two balls opting to take this shot, going trying to go behind the seven. And he had the full seven to get behind. Right. In the nine, he only had half uh, of A little it. ball, and he leaves yeah. a, better, he leaves a uh, much, great, great, much easier shot. Great shot. If he opts to go behind the nine. Well, okay now. I mean, uh, what is he going to do? He's going to try to kick a two rail, a one pocket shot in that right-hand corner pocket. This is where Reyes burns a lot of people with his yeah. ability to kick balls. Well, the ability to kick balls just sold out. Okay, but Shannon but had another opportunity before this one, which is as easy as this. But uh, oh, this is just about full proof oh, here. Sure. Just make the ball come back a little bit. Uh, I don't think Geffren's getting back to the table in this match. Yeah, see you later. He lost a little dignity the last time he was at the table, but that can be overlooked because of how well he's played this match. Oh, man. Particularly if he goes on to win this match and sending <coughs> Reyes, Reyes to the loser side. Well, there isn't any loser side. Uh, uh, forcing well, Reyes to use up his option. Right. And with the pocketing of the nine, then we will have four players left in the tournament all all going to draw. No All going to draw with no option. And it's, I'll tell you what. <laughs> I'll tell you what. He played some great, excellent. Shooting. That nine was a ball. super match, Billy. I, I really am happy to do it with you. Well, it's it's. It doesn't matter to me, uh, uh, Pat. Uh, it's up to Shannon. If, you know, if he wants one, he can get one. If, it, if it's okay with him not, we don't want to have to. It's up to you. Okay, what we're going to do is we're going to close off. We're not going to do an on-camera interview. We're going to allow the players to go ahead on their way. And it was, It's a break time. They're going to eat dinner, and they're going to come back, and we're going to finish this, this great nine-ball tournament. So in behalf of my friend Danny DiLiberto, this is Bill and Canona saying thanks a lot for supporting Stats. Give Pop Pat a call, 1-800-828-0397, and we'll be back with probably another, hopefully, as exciting match as the one we just did.